Hello and welcome to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma, and the enchanting <laughs> Sally. Wow, it was delightful earlier, now I'm enchanting. Well, you're all of those things and more. <laughs> um, <laughs> so a few weeks ago, you hopefully will have seen that we did a video with Sorted Food over on their channel, which was their Pass It On challenge. And basically we had to like all combined effort to make a six layer dessert and it was a kind of trifle and it was awful. And that's not really our fault, we did our best. We did do our best, and to be honest, Gemma, I'd rather just forget about the whole saga because I'm having nightmares about it. And we are better than that. We so are. So we have created the best trifle ever. Yeah, this isn't gonna be like your granny's trifle from the 80s, guys. This is gonna be a Crumbs and Doilies ultimate trifle. Oh. Yes, and it is going to be packed full of amazing Crumbs and Doilies recipes because we're really lucky, right? Because we spend most of our time in the Crumbs and Doilies bakery. So we are surrounded by cake and caramel and all the good stuff, including our famous chocolate sponge. It is so moist, mm. it is so chocolatey, it's absolutely delicious. And then our brand new favourite thing, which is salted caramel creme diplomat. Bit of a mouthful. I hope so. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> She's had a mouthful. Quite a lot. Um, and also chocolate custard because trifle isn't a trifle without custard. It isn't. And we're also going to add our classic Crumbs and Doilies chocolate brownie. We're going to have some salted caramel in there and our probably now world famous caramel cornflake crunch as well. And don't worry if you aren't kind of into the idea of creating a trifle using a gazillion things that you've made from scratch. Although props to you if you are. Um, <laughs> If you want to go out and buy some of these things, like the brownie or even the sponge, mm -hmm. or maybe make trifle using custard powder, I mean, it's trifle, custard <laughs> using custard powder, like we're not going to judge you no. much. But <laughs> if you do want to make this all from scratch, it's going to be quite a lot of work, but it's going to be 100% worth it. Yes, and you are going to need at least one notebook, three mm. pens, a couple of highlighters, because there are a lot of recipes coming your way that you need to take notes on. But if you were born in the 21st century and you don't know what a pen is, don't worry, we've got you covered over on Patreon. You can join our Bake Club where you can get yourself a downloadable PDF which has got full instructions for every single recipe that we're about to show you as well as photos to go along with it. So join us at patreon.com forward slash cupcake Gemma. Do it. That's, that's, that's me. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Uh, so the first thing we're going to start with is the sponge. Now obviously this isn't any old trifle. So we're not going to use any old sponge. You're not using the sponge fingers you get <laughs> down the biscuit aisle or wherever. I don't even know where you find these. Um, we're going to be making our chocolate sponge that we do here all the time. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. You're going to get yourself ready for some creme pat action. So let's get this chocolate cake made. Now you've seen us make this heaps uh, on the channel before, but I'll whiz you through it anyway. And we're going to start with a wet kind of mixture. So I've got here in these jugs 150 ml of buttermilk, 150 ml of coffee, and 130 ml of vegetable oil. And we're going to start off by just whisking those together, just to combine it. And then into there, we're going to add two eggs. Now, I haven't got a separate bowl, so we're going to have to hope that I don't get any shell in. <gasps> Thanks! <laughs> right, and again, you just want to whisk those just to break up the eggs and completely combine them with the rest of the liquid. So that's all of our wet ingredients. Now it's time to add the dry, starting with 240 grams of caster sugar. You can also use granulated sugar and whisk that in. Next up, we've got 215 grams of plain flour and 40 grams of cocoa powder. Mm, and this is the good stuff. This is gonna go right on in along with half a teaspoon of salt and three quarters of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. We'll pop them in and then you're just gonna give this a really good whisk until it's fully combined and there are no lumps. That's looking nice and chocolatey and smooth. We are good to put this into our pan. So I've got a nine inch cake tin here and I've just sprayed it with a bit of um, cake tin spray, <laughs> but you could butter and flour it as well. I'm just going to pour all of it in. And this probably makes it look like we're making 
a relatively small dessert because you know it's just one small little tin of chocolate cake but <laughs> you should know by now that Gemma and I don't make small things. This is going to be the most gigantic trifle you've ever laid your eyes on um, but of course you can just half the recipes to make something smaller. So my oven is preheated to 150 degrees C and this little guy is going to go in for 22 to 25 minutes. Basically you want to test it with a skewer in the center until it comes out clean. Stage one complete. I'm going to hand you over to Gemma who is going to make the most delicious thing ever. Ready? Yeah. She's right, this is the best stuff ever. I can't believe I haven't been making it for longer, to be honest, but it is basically a salted caramel creme diplomat. Now, if you don't know what a creme diplomat is, it is essentially creme patissiere, or pastry cream, which is like an uber custard, mixed with whipped cream. So it kind of becomes this like delicious, light, whippy, custardy, moussey stuff. Also, salted caramelly in this case. So, I mean, I'm like salivating right now just talking about it, and I hope you are too. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So it starts with a dry caramel. So I've got 150 grams of caster sugar in my pan. I'm gonna set that over a sort of low medium heat. Um, and that will just take a little bit of time to sort of start to melt. When it does start to melt, you just wanna poke it around every now and then, just bring the melty bits into the middle, um, just so that it's nice and even. Meanwhile, over here in bowl land, I have three egg yolks, and I'm going to add a whole egg to that. And also, I've got three tablespoons of corn flour. And I'm going to just whisk that together. It won't ever really be sort of pale and fluffy, but it will sort of liquidize and go a little bit paler than it is now. So it's hit a lovely, rich amber color, and all the sugar's dissolved. So now it's time to put the cream in. Now, this can be quite scary, so proceed with caution. I have got 120 millilitres of double cream and I'm going to pour that in really carefully. It is going to bubble up quite a bit, as you can see. It's also super thick cream, which isn't helping. <laughs> and sometimes this seizes up completely, um, which might really freak you out, but don't worry, it's happened to me a million times. It might even be happening now, but it is completely rectifiable. Um, as you can see, it's, it has done it a little bit. It will just dissolve over time, so this is, we're going to keep this um, mixture, we're going to add some other ingredients to it and we'll just keep on stirring it and it will eventually, this sort of nugget of caramel in the middle will all dissolve. Oh, already smells amazing! So I have the heat off at the minute, but I'm going to turn it back on to like the minimum, the minimum temperature and just keep moving that around and when it's mostly dissolved your sort of nugget if you've got one then you can add your other ingredients so i've got 480 millilitres of whole milk i'm going to pour that in Oop. i'm also going to add a teaspoon of salt because it's salted caramel after all and i've also got a tablespoon of good, woo, good quality vanilla extract. Bring in the yummy flavor. And so that's just gonna keep over a medium, low, medium heat. If you have nuggety bits, don't worry, they will dissolve eventually. And when the milk gets a bit steamy, it's time to get on with the next bit. Mmm, well, we have some delicious salted caramel, basically hot milkshake there, but we're not done with it yet. So. I'm going to get a cup measure and just scoop a bit out and I'm going to use this to tend for my eggs because what we don't want is to shock the eggs and cook them. So I'm just gently pouring this over while whisking all the time just to get the, t the eggs up to a, a similar temperature to the rest of the milk. I'll do that once more. And then all of that egg mixture can go back into the saucepan with your milk. Whee! And now we just need to keep that on a medium heat, just stirring all the time, either with your whisk or with a rubber spatula. Just keep it moving constantly and it will take about 10 minutes until it's all nice and thick and it coats the back of a spoon. Oh, that's looking lovely and thick. So now we're just gonna finish that off with 45 grams of butter, just cold butter. And that's just gonna make the, um, it nice and shiny and give it a slightly buttery edge. And once all the butter has melted, we're going to pour it through a sieve just to get rid of any sort of unsightly lumps. 
Ooh, look at that though. What a beautiful colour. And oh my gosh, if this wasn't so hot right now, I would have a spoon in there. Straight in me gob. Oh, yum. Now, it's very, very, very important at this point to cover it with cling film. You do not want it to create a skin while it's cooling because that would be a terrible waste of delicious custard. So make sure you touch the surface with your cling film to completely avoid that awful scenario. And then you just want to make sure that's cooled down completely before you put it in the fridge and leave it to chill, which I did earlier, you'll be happy to hear, so you don't need to wait for that. Um, so I've got my um, creme pat, which I made here earlier. I've actually taken out about a quarter of it because I'm going to use this in the middle of the trifle, just naked and as is. And with the rest of it, I'm going to be making the creme diplomat. Now, it's equal amounts cream to creme pat. So I've actually weighed this already and then weighed the same amount of double cream, which I am now going to whip with my trusty balloon whisk. If you would like to use whipping cream instead of double cream, that would be absolutely fine as well. I know a lot of you ask that sometimes. Um, but for now, you want to whisk this until it reaches a soft peak texture. We are almost there at the soft peak stage. Look at that. I mean, I'm getting a lot of flack for taking so long <laughs> to do this by hand, but you know, I just really enjoy it. It's like the only workout I really get, so I'm, like, I'm here for it, you know? So, soft peaks. This is what soft peak looks like. You dip it in and it flops right over, so that is good to go. I'm stealing one of Sally's <laughs> meticulously laid out utensils, and I'm going to pour the creme pat into the bowl. Oh yeah. Mmm, golly gee, look at that. That is so yummers. And now we just need to mix the two together and it's very exciting. Oh, look at this floppy, delicious bowl of goodness. I am into that. So, that just needs to go into the fridge to chill out while you get on with the next bits and bobs, which I believe Sally is going to show you. That's right, it is me next, and we are now going to make a chocolate brownie. An absolute essential for any of you bakers out there. I think you're all bakers, hopefully you're all bakers, but you must have a decent brownie recipe in your rep. I'm going to show you just that. So this is going to be a 10 inch brownie. So to start with, I've got myself a 10 inch tin here and I've lined it with paper so that it's nice and easy to get out once it's baked. And we're going to start off by melting together 165 grams of butter and 165 grams of 70% chocolate over a bain-marie or in a microwave. And once that's completely melted, it is time to get on with whipping up some eggs and some sugar. So I've got 330 grams of caster sugar. I'm using a stand mixer for this, but you can just use a bowl and an electric hand whisk. And into that, we're gonna add three eggs. And that's gonna get whisking on a medium to high speed for about three or four minutes until it's pale and fluffy. Next up, we're going to drop the speed of the mixer to the lowest setting and I'm going to very carefully and slowly pour in my chocolate and butter mixture. And keeping the mixer on a low speed, it's time to add some dry ingredients. We've got 120 grams of plain flour, 45 grams of cocoa powder and a half teaspoon of both baking powder and salt. And that is it, brownie is made. So we'll just take off that, give that a good lick later. Kidding! Right, <laughs> and then we're gonna pour this delicious thick brownie mixture into our prepared tin. So I've just got myself a cranked palette knife and I'm just leveling this brownie batter out. 
It doesn't need to be too flat because we're going to be crumbling this little bad boy up. And he is going to go into the oven. So I've turned my oven up now to 170 degrees C, fan assisted. And he's going to go in for 16 to 18 minutes. Maybe you like it a little bit gooey, so go for 16. Gemma! I'm, I'm just here, so no need to shout, Sally. <laughs> Right, it's chocolate custard time. So we already have custard technically in the form of the creme pat and kind of also in the form of the creme diplomat, if you're being, you know, pedantic. But it is trifle and custard is my favourite part of a trifle. So why not up the trifle game and make a deliciously rich, indulgent chocolate trifle? We're going to use delicious 70% cocoa chocolate. We're going to use uh, custard made from scratch. But if you do want to cheat on this bit, I'm not going to cry. You can use custard powder, which actually I've got a real soft spot for. Just use your custard powder and then add some chocolate at the end and it will still be delicious. But I'm making it from scratch. So I've got my pan here, which has got 600 millilitres of whole milk, which I'm just going to put on to a medium heat. So while that's heating up, I've got four egg yolks here in my bowl and I'm going to add a tablespoon of corn flour, two tablespoons of caster sugar and half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to whisk that together until it's slightly paler and all smooth and the sugar's dissolved. Now my milk's starting to steam, so that's perfect. I'm just going to turn the heat off and I'm going to grab my cup measure again and just temper the eggs like I did before. So scoop a cup out and whisk it into the eggs to temper them slowly. Do that again if you need to and then pour the egg mixture back into the saucepan with the milk and set that over a medium heat and stir it for between five and 10 minutes until it's nice and thick. Once that's thick and coating the back of a spoon, you can then sieve it directly over 150 grams of 70% chocolate or dark chocolate or whatever kind of chocolate you like and then let it sit there for a second or two before you stir it and make it all melty and yummy and smooth and it turns into the most fantastic chocolate custard. That is ready. And just like with the creme pat, you want to make sure you cling film that right up to the surface to prevent a skin from forming. Oh, this is clingy cling film. Ooh, get in there. <laughs> and then leave that to cool uh, just at room temperature and then put it in the fridge once it is and that will chill down nicely. Next is Sally time. It's me again. And don't worry, guys, I think we're nearly there. Maybe. This might well be the final recipe. I think there might be one more actually having said that. Anyway, let's get this one on the go. So this is the Caramel Cornflake Crunch, which again, you've seen us make heaps. And I will drop uh, in the description box below a link to a more in-depth kind of recipe for this. But for now, let's just get this going. So I've got a saucepan here with 300 grams of caster sugar. That's gonna go onto a medium heat. And we're gonna boil that down uh, until it's completely dissolved and it's a lovely amber color. Once the sugar's completely dissolved, you're going to take the saucepan off the heat and very carefully and slowly pour in 200 grams of double cream. It's going to be really bubbly, so just do this with care. Once that's completely mixed through, you're then going to add in 100 grams of cold chopped butter. Keep on mixing that again till it's fully melted. Then we're going to go back on the heat and you're going to keep heating it over a medium high heat until this reaches 116 degrees C. Once it's got to temperature, you're going to take it off the heat, add in one teaspoon of vanilla and one and a half teaspoons of sea salt, and then you're going to pour in 140 grams of cornflakes. You want to give this a good mix, all the while being super careful, because remember this is hot sugar, it is dangerous stuff. Once your cornflakes are completely coated in caramel, pour it out onto a lined baking sheet and leave it to set. Time to build a big old trifle. Hello, blooming Luya. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> this is a project, is it not? It is. And remember, you don't need to make all of the bits yourself. We just thought it would be fun. Yeah. Second guessing that now, but sure. No, it's no. Fun. Loads of fun. 
This has been, this is literally what I think fun is. So. Yeah, no, it has been fun, but this is going to be better. So what are we going to start with? Well, it's got to be sponge, right? Yes. And we've got our chocolate cake here, which is cooled down completely. And as you can see, we've trimmed the top off, mainly because we just like things to be pretty and neat. And we've also cut it in half because we're going to be doing two layers because, I mean, look at the ridiculous size of it, this trifle bowl. I don't know if there's ever been a bigger trifle. No. Is it actually a trifle bowl or is it a fish bowl? I think it's a fish knows? bowl. <laughs> oh, anyway. Multi-use. <laughs> I'm going to cut little rounds of the chocolate cake out, again, just because we want to make it look kind of cute, but you can just tear your cake up into pieces if you like. While you're doing that, I'm just going to put my delicious creme diplomat into a piping bag. And I've got a round nozzle on the end, um, only because I want this to kind of look neatish. Um, but if you just want to dump this on, that's absolutely fine. It's your prerogative, your trifle. <laughs> Except this one's ours. So yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't have any of this stuff. Strictly ours. Right, so I've got my circles chumped out. What we're going to do is start putting it into the bottom of Le Trifle Bowl. Oh, do and you I'm... speak French, madame? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, I'm just kind of overlapping them a little bit. Looking pretty cute. And once I've done that, I'm going to put one in the middle and then if you've got any little scrappy bits, feel free to just kind of fill any holes with that. I'm going to leave the edge with these gaps because again, we've got a glass bowl so we might as well make it look neat. You happy with that, madam? I think that looks delightful. All Sally. right. Right, now, trifle wouldn't be trifle without a little bit of booze. Just a little bit, you know, <laughs> like just to take the edge off. Um, I would normally use sherry in a tr regular trifle, but this is far from a regular trifle, so we're going to use bourbon. Mm -hmm. It goes really nicely with all the kind of um, chocolatey and caramelly flavours, and I think probably in total I've got like two or three tablespoons in here, and I'm just scattering it really lightly over the top. We don't want to completely drench them. Also, if you don't want to use alcohol at all, that is totally fine. Because this chocolate cake is super moist, like it doesn't really need the moisture, so yeah. feel free to just leave that out. In the old days, things were a lot drier. <laughs> <laughs> I think this will, I think that'll probably do. Okay, so next. now it's time for my favourite bit. Which is this delicious friend diplomat? Do you like my song? Oh, just hurry up and get it on. Okay, <laughs> here we go. I'm just going to blob it all around. Oh, hello. Quite generously, um, a nice sort of even layer on top of the sponge. And whilst Gemma is blobbing, I'm just getting the brownie ready. So we're going to save back a little bit for the topping. So I'm just going to put those bits over there. And this, we're actually going to crumble it up. So get a little bit messy and just crumble it all in here and then we're going to put a layer of this on top of that. Oh, look at that though. That, that does look lovely. I mean, no, I would just eat that as a <laughs> yeah. dessert, to be quite fair. Right, do you want to get sprinkling some of this on? I would simply love to, okay, Sally. Okay, you sprinkle that and then with the rest of it, I'm going to get, chop it into little <laughs> cubes. <laughs> What's next? Well, it's chocolate custard time, everybody, which is my favourite time. Um, well, second favourite. <laughs> so I've got this lovely, luscious chocolate custard here, and I'm going to put half of it on. I'm not going to pipe it because, as you can see, it's quite sort of loose and floppy. So I'm just going to dump it into the middle, and I'll spread it out. Yum. All right, so next up, we're going to put this little bit of salted caramel creme pat that Gemma saved back before she turned it into Diplomat, just because it's such a lovely golden colour, and we're all about getting those colours in today. And this one is loose as well, so we're just going to gently drop it all on. We don't want to spread it too much, we don't want it to mix with the chocolate. Layer one. Complete. Oh, I mean, four layers of layer <laughs> one. Stage one, I think you'll find. So, what happens next? More of the same because we, no, no one's serving half a trifle, half a filled trifle. Girl, bowl. I don't want half a trifle. I mean, that's just enough for me. <laughs> yeah. So, we're going to start all over again.
Oh, great, I've got some left. <laughs> Happy days. It's <laughs> just for me. So we have very <laughs> nearly finished this trifle. You're probably thinking, like, what on earth are you going to do with it next? Well, we've got three little things left. I say little. We've got the caramel <laughs> cornflake crunch. We've got our leftover brownie, which I've cut into teeny cute little cubes. And we've also got some um, salted caramel. You'll be very familiar with salted caramel if you've ever watched any of our videos. <laughs> we've done this recipe a million times, but basically it's super simple. I just made a wet caramel using 220 grams of caster sugar and 120 mils of water. I brought that to the boil, let it bubble away until it was a lovely rich amber colour. And then I took it off the heat, added 245 millilitres of double cream, slowly and carefully guys, and added a teaspoon of vanilla and a teaspoon of salt. Gave it all a good mix and obviously let it cool down before even thinking about putting it into this <laughs> bottle. And now it's nice and cool, so we're going to drizzle some of that on the end. But let's get busy on this top. Okay. I am going to break off some nuggets of this delicious salted caramel cornflake right. crunch. And I'm going to pop on my little bits of brownie. I think alternating it yeah, around the edge I is think real so. pretty. Let's make this cute and pretty. She's done. Do I mean, you think? I think we, we could probably fit a tiny bit more, <laughs> but I think at this point we've got to say there's enough going on. Except for we do need to drizzle. Come the on, caramel. drizzle, girl. Oh, all right. You do it. You're if the you honest. say so. Here we go. Oh my God, Sally. Are you going to stomp? Oh. I think, well, <laughs> I think I finished. I think you finished. I think this is. I looks can't be sure. In cut. Incredible. In look, incredible. incredible. <laughs> look at all these layers. Mm. It's so beautiful. Yum. I don't know how much longer I can I mean, I've literally waited no time at all. It's only just finished. But Do you want to do it? I feel like you should do I it. Like you spent a lot of time done. on this. Thank yeah, you, I did. I did spend a lot of time on this. So here we go. I'm assuming you want me to go oh, all the way. Oh, yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, shall I come with, this, with the bowl yes. just in case? Hell's bells. Oh, oh, oh be beautiful trifle. Nugget. Oh my gosh. <gasps> you know what the best thing about trifle is? It doesn't matter if this happens because it's a blooming trifle, guys. It's supposed to be a little bit yeah. messy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Hang on, I think. Yeah, you want to get that bit. Yeah. <gasps> Nuggets. Look at that golden creme pat in there. Good. Okay, that's your one. Because it's a smaller one. Rude. I'm taking a bit more. I just need a bit more. Thank you. If you're going to eat all of that. I'm absolutely <laughs> going to eat a bit more of that. Let's have a little. Okay. Spruz. I don't even know where to. I want to get it all. Mm -hmm. I want to get it all. I want to get that. I want to get that. Oh, a bit of boozy booze. Mmm. Oh my god, that creme drip from that. Do you know what? It's so good because my worry when we first started this was like, mmm. It's going to be pretty intense. It's going to be like overly indulgent, but that creme diplomat mm -hmm. just lightens the whole thing up. It does. Texturally and flavorally. And it's great because you've got like mm. the soft bits from the sponge, mm. you've got the slightly chewy bits from the brownie, mm. you've got the smushy custody bits, and then you've got all oh, this bit of cornflakes. And the stuff. bit of the kind of Jack Daniels, the kind of alcohol hit that you get just kind of cuts through all the sweetness as well. It does. Oh, this is amazing. It turns out we kind of know what we're doing here. Yeah. Who knew? Take that <laughs> sorted food. Yeah, in your faces. We know how to make a trifle. Yeah. Well, speaking mm. of, of trifle, I'm going to be pretty impressed if you mm. guys make this. I, I'm going to be super so impressed if you do the entire thing from scratch like we've done. And if you do that, then make sure you put it on your Instagram and use the hashtag CupcakeGemma so that we can see. And look, we're not going to judge you if you do any store bought mm -mm. stuff. Like, this is your trifle. Mm. You know, if you want to put something else in there, yeah. go ahead. Let us know how it goes. Yeah, I want to see what you guys use in yours because you don't have to do what we've done. You can use absolutely anything. And oh, I'm do you know what? I've just had it. an idea that which I wish I'd had like two weeks ago. I'm not making was... another trifle. <laughs> the, the masala jelly from Ooh. Barry's Cupcakes. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? That would be delicious. Mm. Anyways, well, if you want to see mine and Gemma's 
fail at the trifle vid that we did with the sort of food gang i'll put that in the description box below yeah. as well to be fair it wasn't our fail it, was it wasn't our fail <laughs> <laughs> and do remember that if you want to get the downloadable recipe with full instructions and photos and all sorts then head over to patreon there's loads of other stuff there as well like extra content we did some extra videos loads of polls and we're just there hanging out and it's super fun we're so just hanging out in the virtual <laughs> world of patreon yeah you know? this is how we roll now i don't go to like clubs and bars now i just hang out in virtual patreon world. yeah it's cool man yeah, it is quite cool actually yeah anyway cool and too much talking not enough trifle eating Bye. Bye. We'll see you next week. <laughs> mm -mm. Yum. Mm -mm -mm.